Hello there, how is it time for 2019 favourites all of a sudden? I've been brainstorming the makeup that really stood out to me in the past year, what I kept going back to, what made a big impression. Starting with makeup, but a skincare version is coming soon. It's a pretty big task to recap an entire year and think about what you enjoyed using. Maybe you keep your makeup down to a fairly tight edit so the answers come to you quickly, or perhaps you also like pretending to be your own beauty editor and tried out a range of products in 2019. There are many pieces here you will have seen in other videos, but hey, that's why they're favourites. To help jog my memory, I looked back over the 103 videos I uploaded and went back through my Instagram at Matilda on video too. Lots of different products popped up that I wanted to include, so this is going to be my biggest video ever, broken down category by category. I have a few all-time favourites that never really change, two concealers that pop up all the time, Chanel Eclat Lumiere for under eye brightening, Clay de Peau for spot concealing, plus Glossier Boy Brow to keep my brows in check, and Chanel La Volume, my holy grail mascara. So let's skip over those and get to the more interesting items. Starting at the very beginning with base products. If you're new to my channel, you won't find foundation in this category because I like barely their coverage and being able to see my skin through makeup, so very sheer skin tints or glowy base products are my cup of tea. The Chanel Le Beige Eau de Teint Water Fresh Tint was a standout in the super sheer Your Skin But Better Stakes last year. You can see a full review in a Le Beige video on my channel and it's popped up in lots of my other videos, but in short, it's the lightest coverage I've ever come across and I love it. Used up a lot. It's a water-based formula with pigment micro droplets that burst when you apply it. Just even out your complexion slightly and leaving a hydrated look. Incredibly subtle, so it's not for everyone, but I've heard from many of you who've been loving it too. One of my top products overall last year was definitely by Terry's Brightening CC Serum. I fell in love with this formula in 2019 and used several different shades, but number four, Sunny Flash, was a late favourite. All of the shades are my ideal kind of glowy base product, something you can wear alone, under makeup, or mixed into your makeup for added glow. There's also a slightly blurring and smoothing effect, so my skin ends up having a sort of do a double take in the mirror, golden by Harry Styles playing in the background kind of look to it. Sunny Flash acts as a bit of a bronze and glow hybrid by warming up my skin tone slightly. You can see exactly how much of each product I apply in my recent festive beauty routine video. In addition to my favourite brow product, Glossier Boy Brow, Glossier's Brow Flick Pen also crept into my makeup bag on a regular basis in 2019. I was first introduced to this by Harry Makes It Up when she did my makeup in LA. It's so helpful to flick tiny little strokes on to really mimic brow hairs and fill in any gaps. Something I reach for for a quicker brow look is Charlotte Tilbury's Brow Lift Pencil in Supermodel, a dark brown. It has a spoolie on one end and an angled brow pencil on the other, but rather than drawing on individual hairs with this one, I sort of shade in my brows lightly to just darken them slightly overall. Next, bronzer. I have a fair peaches and cream sort of complexion, so I used to not even bother with the illusion of looking bronzed, but I got back into it this year, partly thanks to the Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer Stick in Baked. The ease of swiping on bronzer in a stick made the step feel much more approachable. Although this is called a matte formula, I still find it creamy with a bit of a dewy look so it's easy to blend with fingers. But something entered my life in mid-2019 that snatched the gold medal from milk. Undone Beauty's Water Bronzer Stick in Baked is something I bought on Amazon when I was in the US, opened it up, swiped it on, and actually said, oh no, out loud because it's so good and I can't get it in Australia. Honestly nearly bought it back up straight away. It's exactly my kind of barely there, easy to use bronzer. It looks so dark in the stick but it's super, super sheer on the skin. I've been swiping it so many times here and it's truly impossible to apply too much. Before I discovered that little guy, the Milk Makeup Stick felt too chunky for travel. It does come in a travel mini now, luckily, so I packed Shantikai's Radiance Gel Bronzer for a long trip instead. This is a liquid bronzer and a little bit goes a long way, so I apply a tiny dot on my middle finger and rub my middle and ring fingers together to spread the product out so each finger has less on it and can sort of do a different part of my hairline and cheekbones. As you can see, I usually enjoy cream bronzers, planning a video in 2020, but this by Terry Compact expert jewel powder in choco vanilla really took me by surprise. Someone applied this shade on me in store and it was a really beautiful natural bronzer for my skin tone. Slightly more terracotta toned than the others here and nice to dust on with a fluffy brush. Now I don't wear highlighter every single day because my skincare routine and other base products are on the dewy glowy side but when I want a real glow I can't go past RMS luminizers. Champagne Rosé has toppled Living Luminizer out of top spot for me. This slightly rosy glow and really glossy finish just looks stunning. Still with that signature lit from within glow so you look like your skin is glowing not your highlighter. A surprise favourite in this glow category is actually a lip product. No you're not a 
imagining it, this is one of those YSL Rouge Volupte Shine lipsticks. But my friend Harry Makes It Up told me she loved this as a highlighter before other dewy highlighters became so popular. Shade 42 Bar Midi Minui is great to slide onto skin for a similar glowy look in stick form. Love the berry meets mango scent too, and I wear it on my lips as well. On to the best fit. For the last few years, Cream Blush has been my favourite product category by far. It adds life to the skin, it looks healthy and fresh, the textures blend seamlessly, and it's a great way to multitask on cheeks, eyes, and even lips. These are the blush sticks I loved in 2019, arranged by shade from lightest to deepest. Three nude sticks shades made the cut. You can tell it was one of my top brands of the year and a big review is coming soon. Their Nudies Bloom Dewy Color launched in 2019 as a more glossy, dewy formula than their usual matte finishes. Sweet Peach Peony is the super fresh, light peach I enjoyed most from that range. I wear all of these shades on cheeks and eyes and this one gives a nice, glossy, luminous eye look. My Westman Atelier collection continued to grow last year, but one of their most recent releases, the Baby Cheeks Blush Stick Shade Chouchette, became my number one product from the brand. It's a nice peach that's slightly more subdued than the shade above, sort of like comparing two real peaches but one's not quite as sweet. It's a bit more of a neutral and great on the eyes for a monochrome look. The next nude stick shade was only a December discovery, but it made a real impact. The Nudies Matte Blush and Bronze in Salty Siren is the exclusive shade from Estee Lalonde's collaboration with the brand. A perfect peachy coral I've been applying on my cheeks and eyes just about every single day since it arrived. The kit is only available through Selfridges in the UK at the moment, but I've heard it's coming to more countries in 2020. Keep an eye out. Colourpop's blush sticks were one of the launches I was most excited about in 2019. I've been using their eyeshadows for the last 18 months, and they're known for lots of colour and fun but this year they launched a couple of new lines that were a perfect fit with my natural makeup approach. For one quarter and one sixth of the price of the other blush sticks I loved this year, this basically delivers the same result. It's creamy, pigmented if you want it to be, but sheers out nicely, has a bit of a dewy finish, and comes in a wide range of shades that I'll be swatching in future. Roosevelt is the one I kept coming back to as a multitasker, a tan brown that's great to warm up the cheeks and the eyes. Last but not least, the Nude Sticks Nudies Matte Blush and Bronze in Sunkissed, the product that made me fall fall in love with the whole brand and would definitely make my top five picks of 2019 overall. This terracotta shade is rosy enough to wear as a blush as well as a bronzer, it's beautiful on the eyes and although the texture is matte which means it has a bit more lasting power, it's still nice and creamy and easy to blend. Can you tell what sort of blush colour families I'm into? All of these sticks look nice and dewy on too. Definitely what I'm most into, no shimmer, just that hydrated sort of glow. But the beauty of creamy textures is that you can layer them up or really sheer them out for a much more subtle wash of colour that looks like your cheeks are naturally flushed, which definitely applies to the next four blushes as well. Time for the liquid blushes, pots and balms that didn't fit in the blush stick category but I love these too. One of the most talked about launches of last year, or the one I got the most messages about at least, was the M Cosmetics Colour Drops Serum Blush. You can find a full swatching video with all four shades on my channel, but Rose Milk became my favourite overall. A very pretty soft pink that I described in the video as an English rose, Kira Knightley walking through a field kind of colour. This is skincare meets makeup up with hydrating ingredients, a dewy look, and an incredibly lightweight feel. Another blush I kept coming back to in 2019 was the Lila B Divine Duo Lip and Cheek in Be Lovely. This is the only Lila B product I've tried, but I'm sure it won't be the last. A perfect neutral peach and the slightly thicker matte texture means it lasts really well on cheeks and eyes. Earlier in the year, I couldn't get enough of Clé de Peau's Cream Blush. The shade 4 Perfect Peach isn't actually super peachy to me, more of a soft pinky nude, which is great for a very subtle, natural look. The texture might even be one of my all-time favourites, it's super light and smooth. But it wouldn't be a favourites video without some Olio e Osso. This is the all-natural brand I love from Portland, Oregon, and their tinted balms are perfect to swipe onto cheeks and lips for a wash of colour. Number 13 Poppy looks super bold in the tube, but even with lots of swiping, it just looks like a natural, just been for a run kind of flush. I'll be swatching their other most recent balm releases in a video this month. Again, plenty of that dewy, not too shiny, healthy and hydrated look with these cheek textures. Moving on to eyes and a couple of products regular viewers will be very familiar with. The Tom Ford Cream and Powder Eye Colour in Golden Peach is one of only two products that carried over from my 2018 favourites. RMS Champagne Rosé Luminizer was the other one. This was a luxury purchase I did not take lightly, but it's truly one of the best cream shadows I've ever used. Easy to smudge on, not thick or messy, and a pretty glowy peach shade that feels very me and brightens up the eyes. I definitely achieve a similar look with this Gillian Dempsey Lid Tint in Glimmer, but it feels like 
Tom Ford Golden Peach's slightly more laid back, fun, rebellious sister. A thicker, balmier texture for a more glossy, light catching lid in a similar peachy tone. Love this kind of lazy shadow look and I don't mind that it creases. But this next one does not crease on me. I swatched every shade of the Kosas 10 second shadows on my channel in November and you were all just as blown away by the pigmentation of these as I was. This is a water based formula so it's super light and thin but really packs a punch and stays put. Copper Halo is my go to colour for a warm orangey eye. A little bit goes a long way so a couple of dots is enough to smudge all over my lid with my fingers. Finishing with the brightest of the bunch. I've been enjoying Colourpop Super Shock shadows since mid 2018 but Monkey Business was a shade I fell for in 2019. It's a super bright orange so I only need a tiny bit to wear as a wash of matte coral orange on the eyes. The texture is closer to a cream than a powder so it's easy to blend out softly. The reason the packaging is orange not white like usual is because this is actually a shadow I got to press myself when I visited Colourpop's HQ last summer. Still have a fun behind the scenes video on the way from that. A couple of palettes I particularly enjoyed in 2019. Rowan Beauty was a new clean brand by celebrity makeup artist Nikki de Roost. I'm planning more videos on both Clean Beauty and Rowan in 2020. The 75 degree warm palette is a perfect party palette with these effortlessly cool lid alumes, a unique creamy texture with reflex, not glitter, that really catches the light. My most used shades are the bold gold, obviously, at the top and the warm coppery J'adore at the bottom. I bought this Charlotte Tilbury palette when it was a Nordstrom exclusive called the Easy Smoky Eye Palette, but she's since added it to her main line as the Charlotte Darling Palette. The new version is almost exactly the same, but the three shimmers have slight undertone differences. Given it was originally called a Smoky Eye Palette, this is definitely on the softer, more dusty pink side, but I love that. Her powder formulas are super smooth and buttery. Some recurring eyeliner and mascara favourites here. Glossier Play launched in March 2019, and their Colour Slide pencils were a standout for me. Fun, long-wearing liner shades that you can smudge in or use for a graphic look. Candyland is a shimmery peach I often use in the way you'd use a smoky pencil, smudged around the upper lash line and below my bottom lashes. And Jumbo is a bold matte orange that makes my green eyes pop if I stay close to the lash line or you can wing it out for a more playful liner look. For something more classic, the suitably titled Charlotte Tilbury Classic Eye Pencil in Sophia was what I reached for. In 2018, I really enjoyed the shade Audrey, a dark matte brown, but Sophia is more of a milk chocolate and has a bit of gold, so it brightens up the eyes a bit. Chanel the volume rarely gets knocked off my favourites list, and it takes a lot for me to get excited about a new mascara. But in 2019, I was blown away by the Hourglass Caution Extreme Lash Formula. This ticks every box for me. Length, volume, not cakey or flaky, and most amazingly of all, this seems to curl my lashes. I'm glad I wasn't imagining it. Someone else said the same thing in a comment on a recent video, so I'm absolutely hooked. Moving on to lips, which I've broken down into three categories because it was so hard. Like picking favourite children. As a woman at a Charlotte Tilbury counter once said to me, mm, you like lip products, don't you? So let's go through some sheer shades, more pigmented lipsticks and glosses to finish. If I had to pick one favourite product for all of 2019, which I didn't in this video because I have no self-control, it would have been this. Gucci Beauty Voile Sheer Formula in Goldie Red. You know it's their sheer range because it comes in this pretty rose packaging. This is their Hero shade, a really warm orangey red that won't be everyone's favourite but I absolutely love it. It instantly feels summery and fresh and a bit more casual than a classic blue toned red. This formula was a viewer suggestion, thank you Krista, and I love how light and smooth it is. You'll see a few other Gucci shades I'm enjoying in future. The Pat McGrath Lip Fetish Balm in Wild Cherry has made many appearances on my channel, definitely my favourite of her lip stick formulas because it's super balmy and comfortable but still has a reasonable amount of pigment. I often think of a cherry lip as being a really bright red but this has a slightly more pink toned raspberry look to it. You can see it has nothing in common with the Gucci shade above. They're both reds but they're so different. I'm a real Charlotte Tilbury lipstick lover, still planning that big swatching video I promise. Her Superstar Lips formula was my favourite in 2019. It's almost a lipstick meets a gloss, a high shine, comfortable formula with a sheer look and a firmer bullet. I use a few different shades that I'll swatch in 2020, but Sexy Lips was a favourite later in the year. Quite a natural, slightly rosy, deep nude. For a really natural look, last year I loved the Clinique Chubby Stick shade Fuller Fig. This veers more into tinted balm territory than a sheer lipstick because it feels very lightweight and barely there. Such a nice brown toned berry. This is the only colour I've tried, but I'm sure some of you have Chubby Stick favourites, so please share. For a fairly similar look for a fraction of the price, Colourpop's Just a Tint Lip Crayons do the trick. This was the brand's other 2019 
launch I was a big fan of. A sheer but buildable twist up crayon in a wide shade range. I've tried quite a few and will be swatching them soon, but Cutie Fruity is my top pick because it's my kind of brownie red shade. Nice and comfortable on the lips, reasonable lasting power, and a very sweet fruity scent that I don't mind, but it's worth noting. Red tones galore, surprise, surprise. And more red to come in the main lipstick category. These are the more pigmented formulas. Lisa Eldridge delighted us with new lipstick shades in 2019, but one of her originals still made my favourites list. Her True Velvet lipstick in Velvet Morning is a fiery orange red, a really summery pop of colour with a velvety smooth matte finish, but it's not drying on me. Very long wearing if you blot and layer, blot and layer. I was also really impressed by Bare Minerals Bare Pro Longwear Matte launch last year. Rosie Huntington Whiteley was the face of it. You can see other shades in my video on her makeup bag, but Cherry was a shade I picked up later on. She wore this in the campaign and it's super pigmented, actually quite similar to the shade above, didn't realise that until they were side by side, but there's maybe a fraction more tomato red to this. This is the colour I think of when I hear Cherry. Matte and long lasting, but again not drying, it feels very light on the lips. Moving on to some creamier formulas and Bobbi Brown's Lux Shine Intense Lipstick was a 2019 launch I rated really highly. I discovered this by chance at a Nikki de Rooster masterclass in New York, just in the right place at the right time, and these had just been released. She used the shade Claret, a sort of rich berry red, and I loved introducing more shine into my lipstick wardrobe. More swatches of this formula to come. Charlotte Tilbury's Hot Lips 2 collection was a 2019 launch with a mix of matte and satin finishes. Glowing Jen has been my most used shade of the bunch, named after Jennifer Aniston. A tawny rose colour in Charlotte's K-I-S-S-I-N-G formula that you can wear as a very sheer layer or build up for more of an opaque, warm rose look. Finishing with my absolute favourite product to swatch, Glossier Play Vanillic Lip, which I only recently realised I'd been pronouncing wrong. I always thought it was Vinylic Lip, as in a lick of vinyl, but I saw an interview with Emily Weiss and she says Vanillic. Planning to play with the rest of the shades in a video soon, but Baby is still my go-to. A bright, classic red with plenty of shine and a great apricot taste. Excited to see what 2020 brings for Glossier Play. More red action here again, but the textures and tones are different, okay? I prefer not to think of it as being predictable, just consistent but I saved the best till last. 2019 was definitely the year of lip gloss for me. My love of shine and gloss was rekindled and these were the tones I loved wearing. My top clear gloss first, but definitely my favourite gloss of the year full stop. This is the liquid version of By Terry's Colt Bomb de Rose Balm. Has the same luxurious feel, slightly more lightweight than their balm pot, with a bit more shine and the ease of a doe foot to apply it on the go. There's a very slight creamy pink tint, but I'm really most impressed by how nourishing this feels. Definitely a gloss that looks great but gives you comfort too. You'll find a separate video on Rodin's Luxury Lip and Cheek Oils on my channel, and as I mentioned there, Heavenly Hop has been a favourite. This is a super light oil, so it doesn't offer much colour and doesn't hang around too long on lips, but I'm more than happy to reapply because I love the light catching look, and it creates such a pretty dewy finish on cheeks too. I fell down the Chanel Rouge Coco Gloss rabbit hole in 2019 and may never be seen again. This is a luxurious, smooth formula. It has a great chunky curved doe foot, so the gloss applies evenly over the lips. 716 Caramel is a lovely sort of milky tea kind of brown, not too deep or stark. There's almost a bit of rose to it. Another Nude Sticks product from the Estee Lalonde Nude But Not Kit. This is the Nude Plumping Lip Glacé in the shade Nude 06. It is sold separately and I'd bought their Nude Cherry shade earlier so I knew I liked the formula and the peppermint taste, but this shade is a really nice subdued brownie nude. Slightly cooler than the Chanel shade above I'd say. I've tried Pat McGrath's lipstick formulas before, but as soon as I swatched her Lust lip glosses last year, I was addicted. Incredibly comfy, creamy, and crazy shiny. Flesh 6 is a rich rose brown that really ticks the brownie red box I love. Super pigmented for a gloss and smooth. A new Olio e Osso release to round out this colour gradient of lip glosses. Their Lucente lip sheens offer a real punch of colour for a gloss, with the same natural nourishing oils as their tinted balms mentioned earlier. I've swatched all of the shades before but Ambra, the deep coppery brown, just had my name written all over it. There's a very fine shimmer inside, but it just gives the effect of fuller lips. Really enjoying this sort of brownie nude to terracotta colour mood happening here in the gloss section. Let me know what sort of gloss shades you wore most. That's it, we made it to the end. This is my third year uploading an end of year favourites video, but this was definitely my longest one, so it'll be fun to look back in future and see how much or how little my style or colour mood has changed over time. I'd love to hear what made your 2019 favourites. Please list them down below. Did you spot any products in common? Were there particular 
brands that made a big impact for you, let me know your standout products and I'll see you for a skincare version soon. Before I go, a quick thank you for all of your support in 2019. It was a truly mind-blowing year for my channel, passing 200,000 subscribers and 20 million views. I can't get my head around how much this community has grown and how supportive you've been in the two years since I started, so I feel very lucky to have you here. Make sure you've subscribed for a big year of beauty ahead. So many videos I'm looking forward to filming. Happy New Year! Thanks for watching. See you next time.